I'm Sarah Gore and this is Open House NYC. This week we're exploring the design details that really make a house feel like a home, including this cookbook author and food stylist Funky Loft in Brooklyn. And we see how the eclectic aesthetic of this up-and-coming designer to the stars blossomed in her own Silver Lake cottage, along with her furry and feathered roommates. But before all that, original details mix with the chic and functional in this classic townhouse. Overall, we wanted this room to feel like a warm hug at the end of a very long New York day. I think we succeeded. Welcome to Open House NYC, everyone. We have got some great homes this week, but before we get touring, let me just tell you about this luxurious townhouse I am in right now. Located on the Upper East Side, it was built in the late 1800s in the colonial revival style, but has since been impeccably renovated for today's living. The result is a light-filled entertainer's dream home filled with timeless luxury, modern convenience, and show-stopping decor. The ground floor features a modern kitchen with seamless access to the garden, one of three outdoor areas. The parlor level is warm and inviting with a living area and a library. And we can't forget about this deliciously decadent full floor primary bedroom suite. One of five bedrooms in this well over 5,000 square foot home. Let's get started in Prospect Heights, Brooklyn with interior designer Inea White. She blended the original details of this classic townhouse with stylish contemporary decor. The result is comfortable, inviting, and chic every step of the way. Take a look. Hi, I'm Inea White. I'm a New York-based interior designer, and welcome to this Brooklyn townhouse that I designed for my clients. This home was filled with original detail and charm, so we didn't want to disrupt any of that. But we did want to make it feel fresh with color and modern silhouettes. So let's take a look at the results. Welcome to the main living area. This is the first thing you see when you enter the home. Casual elegance was the name of the game here. A bit of uptown and a lot of Brooklyn. The main colors in this area rug are variations of creams, grays, and blues. You can find gray in these two oversized coffee tables and our leather buckle chairs, and dark blue in this custom-built wall unit. This home has huge bay windows, and this opportunity allowed us to install a daybed in what would otherwise be a waste of space. But the star of the show is definitely the chandelier. It's the perfect punctuation to this Brooklyn living room remix. For this dining area, we wanted to create a haven for hosting and entertaining. The original chevron floors provide a direct link to the rest of the space, while the cloud wallpaper delineates it and makes it feel unique. We designed this dramatic bar unit to really get the party started. It's the perfect place to pour another round for your friends. On the opposite wall, we hung large-scale art framed by these contemporary sconces. Now, let's take a look at what we did upstairs. In a past life, this might have been a closet, but we converted this extra bedroom into a nursery. We brought in this custom molding for visual interest, but left a large area for artwork, which in this case is actually a piece of framed wallpaper with the tiger and jungle theme. It reminds me of an illustration in a children's book. And to keep the theme of animals going, we also brought in a large stuffed alpaca and elephant. It's so important for nurseries to be fun, visually stimulating, yet also functional. Now, let's go see the main bedroom. This room captures tons of natural sunlight with our bay windows and our walkout patio door. The lavender walls cast a beautiful glow that makes everyone look good. And we shook things up a bit with a few shades darker on our closet doors. We really opted for a bit of classic and traditional charm with our applied molding design behind our custom nightstands and our custom headboards. One of my favorite components of this main bedroom, the custom window draperies. Fun fact, every single drapery panel is a different length, which is a subtle nod to the eccentric character of New York. Space is at a premium, 
So what we did here was we capitalized on a funky niche that had no purpose and we turned it into our very own customized shoe storage closet. Lucky for us, our client loves shoes. Overall, we wanted this room to feel like a warm hug at the end of a very long New York day. I think we succeeded. Hope you've seen how whimsical modern touches can really flourish in a traditional space. See you next time. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we are with interior designer Francesca Grace. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back everyone. Now we join interior designer and in-demand stager Francesca Grace. Her own classic Silver Lake Cottage is a fun maximalist melange of vintage glamour, art deco, color, and farm animals. See what I mean? Hi, my name is Francesca Grace. I'm an interior designer and home stager in Los Angeles, California, and welcome to my cottage. This is Schnitzel and this is Pat. I have three others in the backyard and they are my little farmstead in Los Angeles. <laughs> These two girls are gonna stay outside and I'm gonna take you in and start the tour. <laughs> the house was built in 1923 and it's an old cottage and the fireplace kind of gives you that feeling when you walk in, it just makes you feel like totally at home. I feel like this space represents me the most as a designer. It's kind of an eclectic mishmash of everything I love. If you look around the room, you see flowers everywhere. I feel like it just changes the atmosphere immediately when you walk in. I grew up eating a lot because my family's from Italy. We kind of have a tradition of eating at a round table because then everyone can see each other and feel inclusive. I'm obsessed with pink flowers. They're basically in every corner of this room. The carousel lamp was a really special find that I was nervous about placing in here because it kind of looks like a nursery, but it worked perfectly. It's obviously nice to have a big table to eat at, but being Italian, you kind of have to start in the kitchen. So I'll let you digest this and we'll head over there. This is my kitchen where I cook all my meals, obviously. Because the house was made in the 1920s, I feel like the kitchen represents that era the most. It's all original, all of the Spanish tile, everything hasn't been touched. So when you're in here and you're cooking in here, you kind of feel all the meals that have been made in this space. I really wanted it to kind of feel like an outdoor dining area, but inside the kitchen. So all of the wallpaper represents the foliage around the house and kind of just giving you that sunny Los Angeles feeling, but in like the Italian countryside. My favorite piece in the kitchen are these Art Deco lacquered red chairs that I got from Candid Home in Los Angeles. I love pops of red. And speaking of pops of red, I'm gonna take you guys to the guest bedroom. So this is the guest bedroom, AKA Penelope's bedroom. She's quite enjoying herself. I didn't realize how big of an obsession I had with flowers until this moment, but this room makes me feel like I'm in Montmartre in Paris. Lots of red, teals, linens, and it feels like it complements the original history of the house a lot with that charming decor. He's getting a little cranky and I think she wants us to leave her room. So I'm gonna take you guys to the main bedroom. I love this room. I think that it has the most incredible light coming from the French doors. The mural on the wall represents a powerful woman and she has a crane on her, which kind of leads you into the wallpaper behind the bed. For me, cranes represent beauty and tranquility. And who doesn't want to wake up in a tranquil, powerful, and beautiful space? This space makes me feel like a Disney princess. Everything's like, a little funky and chaotic, but the happiest place you could ever sit at and eat. And when you're done with Alice in Wonderland's tea party, I love to have a glass of wine in the lounge area.
Well, that's it for now. Thanks for coming by, and I hope you guys enjoyed my tour. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we are with this food stylist and cookbook author who shows off her colorful Brooklyn abode. We'll see you in just a few. Welcome back. Now we join food stylist and author of the cookbook Colombiana, Mariana Velasquez, at her funky, stylish live-work loft in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. It's a colorful, fun space designed to inspire. See why. Hello, I'm Mariana Velasquez. I'm a food designer and cookbook author, and this is our Brooklyn home. I live here with my husband, and this is a loft in a 1910 building. It used to be a reupholstery factory, and it definitely has those nuances. And with the space, with its natural light and high ceilings, we really wanted to tell a story of the places we've been. Come, let me show you. When you come into the loft, this is the first space you see and we wanted to design an entryway that had a focal point. And in the center of the room, we have the artichoke lamp. It's a quintessential design by Paul Henningsen. And then this black table from Black Table Studio, which is made of a solid piece of wood. The studio is owned by a Colombian friend, and it's a really special table he gave us for our wedding. And this is our living room, and it's where we spend most of our time when we're together. So during the past four years that we've lived in this space, we were looking for the perfect sofa. We wanted something with a lot of character, but that was also comfortable. We discovered this pink piece, it's leather, and it fit the space like a glove. We have these open shelves, and here you'll see my husband Diego's beautiful pieces that he's collected from different movies he loves, comics, and then we have combined collections of books. And I think using intimate pieces that are imperfect and tell stories make good design because it's true, it's authentic, it's unique. And this apartment is not only our home, but it's also where I create most of my work. I'll show you the little space where my creativity sparks. Behind me is our office, and color is a big source of inspiration. We decided to use these colors based on Le Corbusier's color palette. So these colors, Robin's egg blue and burgundy, combine together in a contrasting way. And because the sun hits that burgundy wall, it makes the room light very warm, and everybody looks and feels really good in it. We have a step-down dining kitchen area that adds a little bit of drama to the space. So this is the den, and it's a space that feels intimate to us, but also has pieces that I adore. My mother gave us this Kilim rug that is handmade, and the color palette just matches the room, and it's just by coincidence. It wasn't planned. I've been collecting menus for a long time, but in one move, I just let go of all of them, except for two. And these are the French Londi menu, when I went in 1999, and then the second menu is from Per Se, when Diego and I went with his aunt and uncle. So I always said that I didn't want to live anywhere in the city where you could see the train. But then, when I discovered this apartment, seeing the train go by feels really cinematic, and you really feel like you're in New York. Coming up in just a few short minutes, we join Mariana for a closer look in her kitchen while she prepares a delicious dessert from her book. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. Now we rejoin Mariana Velasquez in her Brooklyn kitchen that she designed to her exact specifications. Take a look. So this is my kitchen, and today I'm gonna to show you one of my favorite Colombian desserts. The recipe has grated frozen yuca, and yuca is a root that has a lot of starch, it's also known as cassava. Then we have grated coconuts, grated cotija cheese, which is a salty, dry Mexican cheese. And then we have anise seeds, a quarter cup of butter, 
and I have to say one of my guilty pleasures, which is sweet and condensed milk. When we first moved into this apartment, the kitchen was just two electric burners and a microwave. And our landlord said, you can make anything in this kitchen. So we had the stove put in, another fridge, and kind of designed the space so that we could have an open cooking area. And these tables from Montpelier, Vermont, where I attended culinary school. I have hosted many dinner parties on it, and it's one of those elements and this house that just means so much. So I'll fold everything in. One of those things that really helps is to try to keep the kitchen clean as you cook. That way your area is always open. It's really bubbly. There's a quarter of a cup here. So this dessert, then you call. It's usually served in big feasts, like during Christmas celebrations. And because it has that sweet and savory component to it, it's great, for instance, served next to a pork roast or something really savory because it matches really well. And the texture of the yuca gives it a gumminess that just, it's so great. I'll show you. So this recipe is in my book, Colombiana, which we actually photographed in this very kitchen. I wrote Colombiana because after 22 years of living in the US and learning about cuisines from all over the world, I found that I needed to go back to my roots. And so I decided to sit down and start writing kind of a personal essay about how the food of where I grew up was such a big influence in my cooking and my style today. I understand that it really tells the story of how we entertain here at home, how we host, how we cook, and our philosophy around the ritual of the table. Go ahead and use these uchuvas, which are a gooseberry native of Colombia, and they're kind of savory, so they match really well with the combination of the enyucal. Then I'm gonna use some mint to garnish as well. And then I'm gonna use some powdered sugar. So the combination of being a food stylist and loving interior design comes from that profession of making a scene and making everything look beautiful to stay in people's memories forever. To me, this table is the centerpiece of my dining room. It's all about the ritual and setting a canvas for the food that I've prepared. So combining colors in an unusual way, mixing and matching elements, and also adding conversation pieces. I have these vases, which are these melted ceramic glasses and mugs, and you can always save the day with deli flowers. Thank you for joining me, and buen provecho. Don't go anywhere because check out what we still have to come. I really love giving a modern spin to Art Deco design and this is one of my sexiest projects. We'll be right back. Welcome back everyone. And now we check out this unique townhome in Hudson Square with interior designer PJ Steffen. I'm PJ Steffen, principal of Steffen Design Studio. Welcome to West Soho. I'm extremely excited to present one of our latest projects to you, one of the most exquisite properties in downtown New York. Built in 1910, we gutted the entire building to construct our client's ideal living space, which was influenced by Art Deco design. We designed a sleek update that achieves a modern take on this classic design era. Let's check it out. In my designs, I love to wow people as they enter a space. So we assembled a sophisticated pattern plate to make a grand impression on the way to the elevator. The custom fabricated steel and glass partitions, the bronze trimmed paneled walls, and the cut slab stone flooring were designed to be elegantly playful and to introduce the aesthetic of the rest of the home. The parlor level is a multi-use space where the family can both relax and entertain. This floor is effortlessly divided into a sitting room, a media room, and a formal bar where guests can sit back with a stylish cocktail. What I like most about this space is the walnut bar. We incorporated channeled leather panels with an antique mirror back bar to create a chic boutique hotel feel. 
The double height window provides beautiful light and combines the parlor level with the third floor dining mezzanine and has the perfect place for a piano. Who wouldn't be impressed? On the third floor, our design story continues in the kitchen and dining spaces, where the same bronze trims, architectural steel, elegant stone surfaces, and Versailles parquet floors establish our 1920 chic backdrop. Here, antiques and artwork sourced from galleries in Paris are on display, namely this exquisite tiered crystal chandelier. I really love the view from the mezzanine looking out this double height window. I wanted the space to be comfortable for the family, and the modern kitchen juxtaposed with the Art Deco details is a perfect representation of my style. The home has four distinct bedrooms, each with high-end textiles and materials. I really love giving a modern spin to Art Deco design, and this is one of my sexiest projects. I'm very happy you had a chance to take a look. I can't believe the show's already over. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Like and subscribe, because we're going to keep giving you these amazing homes.